Greetings YouTube, performance reviews, where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today I'm going to answer a very common question I see posted online all the time, which is, why is my European Mila less expensive than the American Mila? And what are the differences between the European spec Milas and the US spec, and why can't I just import a European one and make it work? So today we're going to go through the differences between the machines, and those of you who are subscribed probably can look at these and tell you which one is which. For the rest of you, the white one is an American spec Mila. The darker color one over here that says Brilliant is a European spec Mila. And we do get a Brilliant here, but it is very different than this machine. This machine would be the equivalent to the Elise in the US lineup. So, again, just kind of show the difference, but it is the top spec in Europe. So we're going to go over what is the best machine in Europe, and we're just going to compare it to what is probably the most common machine here in the U.S., which is just a C3, a standard version. And we'll go over some of the differences in terms of suction power, voltage, wattage. All these things are different between the machines. They have different motors in them. They have different cords in them, a variety of things like that. So... We're going to start with the body and then we'll go to the accessories because those are also very different as well. They very much look similar. So let's start with the obvious differences between them. Uh, like I said, they are slightly different models, but they are both C3s. So the body is the same. So the quickest way to identify a European model is the plug. You can see that the plug is very different. This plug is meant to run, particularly in the UK, though there is a few other versions of these out there, but you can see the standard American plug is very different. It also is not grounded. European machines usually have a grounded plug. This one being a UK plug, it has to have a fuse in it as well. So again, first obvious difference, and you can see that the cords, uh, the US cord is thinner than the European cord. Now this also explains, when we're looking at the C3 in particular, why the cutout is so big versus the American cutout. And that was one of the designing points of the C3. And I guess I should also disclose my relationship with Mila. I have worked and been trained by Mila very various different times in my life. I currently, at the time of filming, have no association with Mila. So this isn't sponsored by Mila or anything like that. But I just am going to use the Mila to show the differences because it's probably the most common one that's brought up that comes from Europe. There's a couple others, and we'll go over those in a different video, particularly the C3. So first of all, we know the cords are different. Then the backsides are different. I'm going to try my best to show this on camera. Keep in mind these stickers are like a shiny material. So when we look at a U.S. model, we can see... 120 volts, 60 hertz. We can see with an electric power nozzle. Now this is a key difference, is this is a two motor unit most commonly in the US, though they do make the one motor units. So 10.5 amps. We can see also that there's a date code 0819. That's very important as well. The other stuff, not so important, the serial number, none of that. But we can see that it is 120. Now if we were to open up this unit, also, the motor in here will be marked USA or North America, depending on which model it is. When we look at the European variant, you can notice this is a little bit different. The first thing we see is 220 to 230 volt range. And the reason that they're saying that is this machine uh, can operate at a wider variety of electricity than the US range. Uh, and then in, in Japan gets its own machine as well, but that's another story. So we can see 50 slash 60 hertz. A lot of times it will just be 50 hertz, and that's how the electricity goes back and forth, the AC electricity. You can also see under here we have 1,700 with a max of 1,200 watts. Now the U.S. did not have a wattage rating uh, on the back, it's just out of curiosity. This one does not have it on the front. The older ones would have a wattage rating of 1,200 on the front. 
but you can see that's quite a bit, 1700 watts. That's a lot of electricity to be going into a vacuum cleaner. Now, in the Europe right now, they have been cucked with their whole EU and stuff, so these machines might be lower wattage now in Europe, but keep in mind, you'll still see that 220, 230 volts. So that's a huge difference between them. Now, here's an older one, but if you see, it says 1200 watts. So the older European ones would also say like 1700 or 1200 watts. So when you start going over that 15 amp range, that's how you know it's not a North American spec machine. That's a technical detail, but most machines are not over 12 amps. But when you see things that are 15 and 17 amps, then you know it's a European spec machine. Now I've got both bag covers open right now. Um, these are exactly the same. They take the same bags, the same filters. Miele has had a push to stop selling the European bags online lately, but the European bags do tend to be marked a little differently. Uh, this one says high clean, this one says air clean. Oh, yes, I have the European spec bag in the European spec machine because I'm a sick puppy like that. Um, but actually, if you feel the difference between them, the, uh, they're both fleecy bags. You can interchange them despite some dealers saying that you shouldn't and it voids the warranty. Really, Mila just doesn't want you buying the European bags for less in North America. So those are interchangeable. And again, that is a current problem on Amazon, but I suspect that won't be a problem in the future. The HEPA filters are the same. I always recommend you use genuine Mila stuff. Now let's close the lids. And before you close the lid on the Mila, you always wanna just push the bag in, make sure it's seated. Now my European machine has a power takeoff port. A lot of them are not going to have a power takeoff port. The accessories are exactly the same. Mine is missing a dusting brush. It was damaged when I got it. So those are all the same. And again, if we go to the back side, this is all the same. The buttons are the same. Again, this is a higher trim machine, so it's gonna have uh, the nice die cast buttons and stuff like that. But the, these are all the same, the parking space, all that. So all this is the same because it is the same model. So that means when you're picking one of these up used or you see one of these on eBay or Amazon or something like that, somebody who's not an authorized retailer, it's gonna be real hard to tell the difference between them. Let's go over how we're going to plug in the European Mila and why it's not practical to get that. Let's go over my transformer box. I'll put a link in this in the description if I find one that's this big. Generally, these are built to order when you order these. This particular one is 3,000 watts. And why do I have 3,000 watts? Well, unlike an American cleaner that's limited to 1,200 watts, a lot of the European machines can go above 2,000 watts, especially when a vacuum motor first starts up, it can surge. So it could surge up to close to 3,000 watts. So you need one this size to run a vacuum cleaner. Now this just converts the electricity. It does not convert the Hertz. So this is still going to cycle faster at the American speed, which means that certain European products, even though the voltage is right, the Hertz are wrong and can fry certain European boards. A lot of early, early European products had problems with their circuit boards because of how fast our electricity switches here in the United States. Uh, that's the best way I can put it into layman's terms, but that's something you want to know. So the box uh, goes both ways. In this case, I'm going to plug this in. And again, this plug is kind of finicky in here. Um, it's real loose. Makes me nervous, uh, but that, that's how that is. And then the box will turn on. And now you see the machine is ready to go. This box also weighs about as much as the vacuum cleaner, if not more. It's, it's fairly heavy. It's about 10, 15 pounds at least. Uh, so this isn't something you'd bring along your house and wanna practically have to plug in every time you plug in your vacuum cleaner. So that's how we're making this video happen. Now that we've established how we're getting power to both of these units, let's talk about what the C3 gets, the American version. And you'll notice the hose is heavier because it has the electrical uh, for the power head in it. That's getting 50 inches of working vacuum on its full power setting. 
which are excellent numbers. Let's see how much the European Mila gets on its full power setting. Now you'll notice that the European Mila got 70 inches of working vacuum. That is a dramatic increase. It's a huge increase. And the first time I experienced this was in China where they used 220 volts and I got my mother-in-law a C3. And I was blown away by how much power it had because of American Milas have a lot of power, but this is central vacuum-like power in a portable unit. And that's because they're able to get a more efficient motor in there because of the 220 electricity. My understanding is currently in Europe, when you get a C3, it's been neutered, and you're getting closer to the power of our machines now that their wattage has been restricted. Before they had that restriction, this was a possibility. Now, of course, I do have central vacuums that are far more powerful than both of these. But my, my overall point to you is that this is a really powerful vacuum. And I think this is why we don't see central vacuums in Europe as often. Because the electricity is efficient enough that they can put a motor like this in the unit. Now, why we're on the subject, if you have a Dyson stick back, you get 20 inches of working vacuum on its highest setting to give that uh, number some relevance to you. Well, you might feel at this point in the video that the Europeans get a better vacuum cleaner. And that's where you would be wrong. They get a different vacuum cleaner. They are cleaning a different kind of flooring. Area rugs and hard floors are what are common in most of the world. In the United States, as you can see when I've been filming this the whole time, I've been on wall-to-wall -wall carpet that has a pad, the carpet, sometimes is even glued down to the floor. This is a unique type of flooring in North America that's very common, it's comfortable, it absorbs sound, it traps allergens in it, keeps allergens from blowing around the room, unlike what they would do on hard floor. So it's a level of luxury we have here in the States. And to deal with that level of luxury, we need to have a different nozzle for cleaning. And this particular nozzle, the clean wall-to-wall -wall carpet, usually has an electric motor in it. Unlike the European machine that runs about half the cost, well, <laughs> here in America, we need a two-motor machine. And running electricity through a wand, through a hose, adding the switch to the hose, and then adding all that electricity has to make it to the second motor down here to power this spinning brush. And this is what's grooming the carpet and getting in the carpet and cleaning the carpet. Now, if you buy this attachment by itself, it's a little under $300. Well, all of a sudden, the costs of the machine become very close to each other just when we buy this part by itself. Not to mention the wand and the hose and all the additional circuitry and stuff to get the power here. So this is the majority of the differences between the cost between an American machine and a European machine. You notice on the European machine, there's no spinning brush. It's just a straight suction tool. It's very basic. The wands do not have an electrical connection. And the hoses do not have an electrical connection. Those are huge differences between the machine in terms of manufacturing costs and raw material costs alone. Even if we add all this stuff up, let's say, you might say, why is the American one still a little bit more expensive? Well, there's one other thing that people don't like to take into account. And we're very spoiled with Amazon Prime with getting free shipping. When you're trying to get something halfway across the world, shipping does cost money. Getting these things here does cost money. Also, they have to be certified by the UL and whatever other American regulations to not burn down your house. And considering that these machines operate at completely different voltages, different hertz, that's huge. And that, that costs money. And that's something that a lot of people don't want to think about or think that somehow is free. No, the engineering differences between these two machines, the fact that they even can use most of the same parts is quite an achievement. So that's something, when you're really looking at the differences between these and the cost of buying a European machine, from Europe or a European machine for the American market. 
Huge difference in that. Now, fun fact, the older Milas used to have an American motor that was shipped over to Germany and then stuck in it because they weren't dedicated in making the American market work. They weren't dedicated at the American market. And they did that for the first 15 years of their imports as they put American motors in their machine. It wasn't until the early 2000s that they started putting like German motors in their machines. So that, that, that's a huge difference between these. I hope showing these differences has clarified between the European spec and the American spec machines. And I, I hope that this helps somebody in the future from not getting scammed in America for buying a European machine and then not being able to use it because our plugs and everything else is different electrically here in this country. This continent, I should clarify, this continent. So give this video a thumbs up if it helped you. Definitely, if you want to talk about something else vacuum related, check out our Discord where we talk vacuum cleaners all day long. If this really helped you, we have a Patreon page. Every little bit helps there, especially with uh, YouTube's policies. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.